welcome back to another episode of Exploring Open Systems. This one is another Linux distro, and it's more of an independent distro. So one you've probably never heard of before, but this episode is going to be taking a look at Semplus OS, and this is version 7.0.1. So here we go, this is the logon screen. Now it's a, it's, a, it's a small screen for the simple reason that um, the the, <laughs> the resolution doesn't seem to bode well with the actual logon screen. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot bigger if you're running this on actual hardware, but this is running a virtual machine, so of course it's going to look different. So excuse the fact that it's in a corner of your screen, but we will log in. And of course it's defaulted to the large screen resolution that I've set for it. Now there's issues with the suggested screen res resolutions, or the ones you can choose from. It's left, this one that seems to be the closest to what I want, it's left the top of the screen being cut off so you can kind of see where the mouse just kind of disappears. And it's still going to the very top, still not another like inch to go before it goes to the top. But this is a desktop right here, yes, this is just how minimal the desktop is. You've got a little notification area down here, you've got the clock, I mean you hover over it, it's just like any other win <laughs> version of Windows for instance. It's got the clock right here, it's got the time and dates of date stamped the episode, but if I right click right here, this is the, oh, I'm not going to call it the start menu, I'm going to call it more of the simplest menu, I think that's actually what it's called. Um, so this is the simplest menu, and when you first log in, this, the resolution is a lot smaller, but it will give you a simple kind of help system when you first like start up, saying, you know, Click on right click on the, on the screen and click on the search system at the top. So, if I do it right now, I'm going to show you the search system. And there we go. And of course, I think these guys have to work on their programming a little bit because it's a little bit weird. Can you see how the desktop wallpapers kind of tell at that? And whenever I try to like fix this, it doesn't seem to work out. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to explore some of the desktop wallpapers on, on this one and just show you just how weird it is. Now it's in the centre, but if I go to the screen, you'll notice the little bar at the bottom here, the taskbar thing, it changes. Where the heck did that screen just go? Right, and it's just completely glitched. I don't even know where that desktop settings has went through. So this is going horribly well, isn't it? Jeez Louise. Okay, fine. Go back into desktop. Try to change that, if possible, but you can kind of see how it's not even doing too much. You go to screen, go, go to fit. You can kind of see how it's just not, you can kind of see the blue that I've set right here, it's just not. It just does not work too well, so you can see how it's changed colour right here. And um, of course it's glitched all the way around the screen, so I don't know what's going on right there, so can you see nice wallpapers I've got to say. You can kinda of see the wallpaper and behind the bar behind the <laughs> behind the bar. <laughs> behind the the taskbar. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep it onto this because that's not changing, it's just very glitched, so yeah. Um not sure if this will be different if you run this on actual hardware, but as I say, this is a virtual machine, so maybe that's probably messing about with some stuff. But this is it, this is Semplus, and I think there's some other stuff to need to work on as well, but that, that's just one little thing. If you right click on this little thing right here, it clears that. And of course, I've lost this little window. I think this has got something to do with the multiple window arrangements going on right here, which I think you can only like find these, win find these desktops by doing, I don't even know what, how, how we get the desktops. Desktop 1, right, <laughs> desktop, I'm learning as I go, thanks. Go there, go there. Right, desktop 3, go there, go there. Uh, hmm. I don't know where the, the desktop uh, settings has went, it's really awkward. But here we'll, we'll continue. Now, when you first run this from a from a live CD, the there's a little bit of a 
a quick note right here, the username is lucky user. Um, that's what it says up here kind of thing, so the username will show on the little menu at the top. You've got a little music thing right here, so I'm supposing that when you're running a music application, it'll go right here, so it's kind of similar in a way to Android. Uh, you, if you bring the notification area in Android, it'll come up with the, the app and the notification telling you what song it's playing anything else, you can play and pause on the notification era, area, even. Now, in Windows Phone, there's actually a thing where if you put the the volume up and down kind of thing. I used to use Windows Phone. Um, if you bring the if you bring the volume up and down, it will bring bring down the the volume control, the play and pause thing from the app you're using from that. But there we go. So so these to me these app applications right here seem to work kind of like um, I'm not even too sure. I think they work kind of similar to the start menu in Windows XP, where the where if you were to set a particular web browser that's not the one that's built into this OS, it will change this little link here. It doesn't actually change the icon, but it will change the actual where it points to. And um, so if I go to internet right here, it will say right here that it's running Ice Weasel, not not Firefox. Ice Weasel. So if I click on this, it opens Ice Weasel. And can you see how it's cut off at the top right there? Um, it's not the screen's dodgy, it's just that the resolution is dodgy. So, but you can kind of see Ice Weasel. There's a bit of a backstory with this web browser. I, initially, I think there was some issues going on behind the scenes with the company who owns Debian, eh, which is another Linux distro. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that. Eh, Debian, Debian, whatever. They wanted to have a built-in web browser, but of course I think they had some kind of beef with Mozilla Foundation behind the scenes. So, of course, Mozilla Firefox is open source, which means you can take the code from it and work it into something else and make it your own web browser kind of thing. But the Mozilla brand and the Mozilla Firefox icons and logos and so forth are trademarked. So of course you cannot use Mozilla Firefox in your own fork of the, of the web browser kind of thing. So that's the reason why it's been rebranded to Ice Weasel. Which is kind of funny, I don't know how... Ice Weasels kind of like to, uh, Ice Weasel, I don't know how Weasels tie into being the opposite of Foxes, but you hold but ice, ice is opposite of fire, so fair enough. Um, you can get the gist right there, and then it's, of course, it kind of if you have these both icons side by side, you probably th see that these are both similar in some some case. But of course, I now I think modern the being operating systems have. Um, Firefox as a default because I think they just they cleared the air, they're now happy and friends kind of thing, but you can still download Ice Weasel as far as I'm concerned. Correct me if I'm wrong in that one, but that's Ice Weasel for you. Let's expose my applications right here, so graphics, document viewer. Um, recent documents, what is this one? Open an existing document. Fair enough, it's a simple application, so you've got Galculator. 89, but da do do there we go. Applications, accessories, mouse pad. When I first started testing this one, I was wondering what mouse pad actually was. It's really weird. Half the stuff that half the naming conventions they use for Linux is just weird. Um, it's very confusing for outsiders to understand. Um, I think, but mouse pad. For whatever reason, I thought it was something to do with like mouse settings or something, but of course it was an accessory, so I'm just like, I just clicked on it anyway to see what was going on. And of course, it's a notepad! Very confused, I wonder what it saves as, but I'm just going to type in, hello, there we go. I wonder if it saves as a .txt document, so save, it doesn't actually save, but I'm going to save it into my folder. I'm just going to call it, uh, name, uh, notepad thing. Not a bad thing, but fair enough, we'll go for that. It's original, it's unique enough. So we'll go into... Where, where am I? Places? We'll go into my folder. Not a bad thing. And I'm really curious, um... Why is it showing like a settings kind of thing? I'm real confused by that. Um, but of course when you click on it, I think, yeah, it does open. So... Another thing I've got with this, I'll open Ice Weasel back again. Notice how if I've got this maximized, 
maximize, please, thank you. Of course, there's no button to access the menu itself. So it's like, initially you're just like, how do I, how do I right click, right click, where, how do I get to the menu? You right click on the taskbar, or the little bar down here kind of thing, and then you'll find it, which is kind of awkward, the first time you discover this. Um, so, that aside, we'll just close that, we'll just minimize that. Uh, graphics, we've got Mirage, which I think is just a, an image viewer of some kind, I think. We'll go back to applications, so we've got screenshot, we know what screenshots do, they just take a screenshot of the screen, I think. Uh, X, XF Burn, a DVD burner maybe? Archive f a program? What's with these X's? Uh, too many X's for my liking. But, um, G GFTP. Cla claws, cl claws mail. Welcome to Claws Mail. Whatever. Um, so internet. So we got Claws Mail. Ice, Ice Weasel, which has got the traditional way, way you can think of here. You get a uh, U Torrent I Archiver. I don't know. X Chat IRC. What the heck is X Chat? What, what is an IRC? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. But I'm Gumeric. New <laughs> GNU Merrick, which is a uh, spreadsheet program. Another thing that's quite awkward, as an, as an outsider going into Linux kind of thing, it's kind of confusing because normally the save button would be about here, but of course it's at the very end, so you're just like discarded initially. So you're just like, if you want to save it, you're just like, <gasps> uh, I think I just deleted that. So it's kind of awkward in that way, but. You know, it's original. <laughs> it's about what they're trying to go for. So, document viewer, just opens documents. You've just seen that before. Applications, Office, Abbey Word, a word, word processor. Thank you. There we go. And we can morph the text and everything else. Uh, there we go. Deja vu. So, we can change that. So, we can change it to make it bigger. So close without close without saving. So we'll go back to sound and video. Gnome M player. That's basically a media player. Now we'll go back into sound and video. So we've got mixer. That's a volume. That's a volume uh, mixer. Uh, Prager. XF burn again. I've, I think we've already seen that before. XF burn. XF burn, pulse, audio, volume control. What does this do? Open, open for me. Just a music player. <laughs> it's just a music player. Um, that's all the programs right there. Now, of course, one thing I want to show right now is this is the settings panel. Shortcuts. Do not show current from execute action after. La 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 la. Whatever. This is the settings panel right here, and of course, out the box, it's not got too many options on it, which I find quite annoying. Panel. Enable launchers. Cancel. What does that do? Auto hide panel. What does that do? What does that do? I am so confused. Not playing. Um, ah, so that's what it does the music little thing. So if you have a music player open, it'll come up here. Uh, so I'm just like, what? What does this do? Where's this little launcher thing right here? Then I, I'm so confused. But uh, of course, going back to the settings kind of thing. Compared to what you actually get with this, you can, you know, add users and so forth, but it's quite minimal. So features, right, so I'll go into that. Manage same plus features, so you can add or remove certain things. Certain, certain features such as changing the desktop resolution has to be done separately. So you go into applications, system tools, preferences, and monitor settings. And that's how you modify certain X, Y, Z options. So we've got the file manager as well. But I really think you should add links to here because it's kind of confusing out, out the box initially. Um, so we've got preferences and so forth. 
these preferences and admin tools should probably be in the settings panel to make it a little more simplistic. But that's just that. So you've got the screen server options as well, which I, do they, no, they don't even appear here. So they could they could easily insert the the um, the screen server options in the personalised area right here. I don't think you can actually see it right here. You know why why not do that? Make it more simplistic for that reason. I thought is what this is supposed to be like. It's supposed to be some simplicity out of the box. It's not really um, affirming to its option. So this is the display settings right here. So that's what I've changed out of the box. It was up to the very top right here. So I'm just going to close that. We're going to go back. In. We're going to explore some of the um, screen servers right here. Where am I? Uh, screen servers. So I'm just going to wait for that to pop up. So there we go, we're going to take a look at these screen servers, so warning, this version of X screen server is very old, please upgrade. No sugar Sherlock. <laughs> Abstract tile. Very Tetris like. You've got the kind of graphics from like old 16 bit computers. And of course it gets glitchy after this, because I've already seen these before and some of these screen servers are kind of glitchy, especially this one. You can kind of see it right here, it's not really working too well. It's working this time. Fair enough. But, one other thing also is, go back onto it, if you move the mouse for instance, you can kind of see how it's not doing anything. You have to click away from it to actually get it to go to what you wanted it to do. Lock screen after 20, 20 minutes. So, where am I? Let's, the, the ones that are greyed out, you have to actually install them separately. You can see it's not installed. Um, both bubble 3D. Um, so the ones that are black are selectable. So some of them I th think are quite uh, relaxing to look at. They're quite therapeutic and kind everything of else. Kind of that kind of that thing you get when you look at a fish tank and you're just like, oh, you just want to admire. You're just like watching them kind of thing. Um, it's very um, this one, this deco thing. Kind of makes you think when you look at it. It's as if your your screen is breaking for some reason. It's very weird. You can kind of see right here all the colours and so forth, but it looks as if your screen's breaking, um, I think. But um, of course, every time you play it, some of these screensavers will change. So, of course, this one will. Every time you preview it, will, will alternate and everything else. Distort. You can you see how this like warps the screen a little bit? It's kind of fun. So we're going to settings. Additional stuff you can do, you can mess about with the settings and so forth, and just see how it changes and so forth. Fiber lamp. We've seen this one before, I think. Um, but this is fiber lamp. And of course, this one changes colour as well. I, I think I've already mentioned this, but I've actually got one in real life. But it's actually just a cheap little thing. It just its default colour is blue. It doesn't change colour at all. But um, we've got fiber lamp. Fuzzy flakes. I think this one quite. This is quite weird. Um, speed is slow, we'll make it a little bit faster, I suppose. Blue, cyan, yellow, random colours. We'll see what that one looks like. That's actually quite, it's a lot smarter that way, I think. You can change the colour, it just alternates and so forth, which is kind of fun. I actually like that, that's quite nice for Christmas. Galaxy. I love this one, because it um, reminds me of Windows XP. A kind of thing where you had the star, the star, the star screen saver kind of thing, where just fly through space. That's what that reminds me of, but it's also unique in its own right as well. It's got kind of like a motion to it. It's kind of like you kind of see a little, little Milky Way thing going on there. It's kind of weird, but it's, it's actually quite nice to look at. We'll scroll down again. Hello, hexadrop. It's supposed to be hex, um, what's, what do you call it again? What do you call those shapes again? <laughs> Hexagon and so forth. Um, but these are like 1960s wallpapers, animated wallpapers kind of thing, you know what I mean. But of course it changes every time you go into it. But it's quite smart, quite unique in some way. And every time you go back into it, it changes. So it's kind of like a wallpaper kind of thing. And that's what you, that's what you get for the pattern. So, yeah, that's quite fun. Kaleidoscope. 
this is really trippy. It's like 1960s slash 1980s like computer graphics, if you know what I mean. But I'm pretty sure I've probably had some kind of like epilepsy warning here because some of these kind of things get a little bit too flashy for, their, for my liking. Like this one right here, I don't know what that's going to do for people with epilepsy or anything, but um, I might add a, a warning before this. Space. What the heck is that? <laughs> Some of these are just weird. Whoa, okay. Hey. Basically, just like 1980s graphics, but it's got the kind of resolution of something you see from the 1960s. Color TV. Again, it just it, it just rotates every now and then, and of course, I want to see the maze one, but that's not there. Metaballs. Metamorphosis is what, what it is, I think. Um, because you can see the ball was like splitting apart and so forth. Kind of fun to look at. Moir. <laughs> uh, Penrose. I'm kind of confused by this. What is this supposed to be? Don't even know what a Penrose is, but that's just me being stupid. Uh, Petri. Pop squares. This actually went up. I modded earlier on, and it's actually quite smart to look at, I think. Um, it's basically the colours of the channel's uh, theme colour. Uh, red and yellow. But you kind of see how it's changed the colour and so forth. It's quite, quite relaxing to look at. Make use that as my eye <laughs> So it ripples. The first time I looked at this, I'm just like, it doesn't seem to do nothing, because you click on it, it you click on it, and it just glitches out the screen like that. But what I didn't notice is the colour of my eye and everything else, the screen is actually doing stuff. It's actually rippling. You can kind of see going on right there, this, it's rippling like water kind of thing. Ripples, desktop. This looks like the screen is being broken because you know those LCD screens that you just press on them and just kind of like it warps the screen a little bit. That's what it looks like it's doing. It looks like invisible people are touching the screen going tap 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 tap. <laughs> Hello? S so this is basically what you do, like if you've if you've seen those apps on your phone kind of thing, where you've got the little water emulator kind of thing, so you just move your finger about the screen and kind of see like, that's what it's kind of doing. I don't know if you can actually see that, but you kind of see the ripples going in a straight line, as if someone's putting their finger in the water and just stripping it about. Quite, it's quite smart. Shade bobs. I think these are kind of like um, Slaughter the Isle, that game that you play online. That's what it reminds me of. Slide screen. Like one of those slide puzzles you get, where you just slide all this stuff about, so it's kind of like... I wonder what this, this would be like when you left your computer and just let it for a little while to do its own thing. I wonder if it would just completely warp the screen and just be like unrecognisable. Of course, when you click away from it, it's back to normal. Eh, uh, I don't think there's anything else. Swirl. This is very... Up uh, weird to me. You can kind of see these little squares that make it more and more high def as it, as it goes on kind of thing. So, I don't know what it's doing, but you can kind of see this HD kind of square kind of thing. I don't think I can see this one, but I can see it. It's slowly and slowly getting bigger. These little squares making everything more um, clearer to look at. It's kind of interesting. Tessel image. <laughs> you can see how we click on it and just like Another one that kind of makes you feel as though your screen is breaking up. It's kind of weird and that way. You kind of see how the icons and such. It's just like it's like warping the screen a little bit. It's kind of weird to look at. Jeez, that is weird. <laughs> I wonder if I was to like move the screen a little bit and maybe like uh like 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 so. See what that does now. Get a big blue square at the bottom here. Again, you see the desktop and so forth going on. They're, most of them are kind of weird to look at, but that, meh. That's alright. So, there's not too many crafts I've got with this, but one of the few I've got is I prefer a little button at the bottom right here, you know, that I can click on and just shoot up the menu kind of thing. The first time you use this, you'll be a little bit confused as to where's the menu at, and you just like right click. Of course, it'll help you when you It'll help you when you first, you know, log in and so forth. But um, if you don't already know, if you're like using a 
a, a program for instance, like with the web browser, just like you don't know, you can right click on the, the taskbar and open up with the little simplest menu kind of thing. But um, another thing that you fix as well is the resolution and the desktop wallpaper. I'm not too sure if it, as I said, I'm not too sure if it's to, something to do with the fact that I'm running this in a virtual machine or not, but I've not experienced this in real hardware, so maybe it might be a little bit different experience. But you can, as I say, you can kind of see the wallpaper clearer on the taskbar kind of thing, or the bottom bar, whatever you call that in Linux. But that is just that. Um, it's quite an interesting little concept for a, a very simple OS, but of course, as I say, take all the settings for instance, put them into a separate area, or put it into a, the settings area as well, um, for that case, put in the settings panel. Um, I think the task manager could go in the settings area as well, just so it's more findable, <laughs> if that's even a word. I think they should take some of this stuff out, like the file manager and the root terminal for instance, uh, and maybe just put them into the apps folder, and you know, make it more noticeable head headshot kind of thing, and then the file manager has to go somewhere in the main screen because it's some like, one of the main things you want to find is your files and so forth, so it's just like, what are places? And then you look, go on to it, it's just like, oh that's the file manager. This is the rubbish bin, as you know, seen in other OSs. Basically, the trash is a buffer between you actually physically deleting a file, which, of course, you don't actually delete anything from computers. It's still on the hard drive, but just the pointer to it isn't longer, no longer there. That's just another, it's a different story altogether. But that's a disk as well. That's the disk that I used to install this OS. Desktop, which is kind of pointless because if you try to add something to it, there's you can't add icons to it. The desktop, you can't add links, so I'm just like I'm not a big fan of that myself. But if you try to add a folder, yo, what? What? I'm there. <laughs> but you kind of see the desktop. There's nothing there on the desktop. You can't see any icons and so forth. So it's all in this desktop folder, which is kind of has a kind of pointless existence, I, I think. Notice how the the rubbish icon changes when you have some inside it. Fair enough. But with that says, this is Simplest OS. And I have to say, it's actually not a bad OS. I, po I probably say, I probably suggest, you know, you take a look at it yourself um, if you like. Um, it's easy to use when you get the hang of it. But, for instance, if you're maybe wanting to look for a simple OS for your, you know, your older family, for instance, you just want something to use that just out of the box is just simple to use. I'd probably only suggest simplest as if there's a little menu at the bottom right here because of course I think that might be a little bit awkward and confusing for them. And of course, add some games to it <laughs> at the box because I don't know if there's any way to actually install new applications outside of going into a web browser. There doesn't seem to be a clear store on this but that's just that. Um, with that being said, this is Exploring Open Systems. Thanks for watching, and if you have any suggestions for stuff, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Um, also, there is an email at the, end, at the end screen that you can use to contact us. But with that said, please like this video, please subscribe if you're new to the channel, and also, we'll see you next time. Bye!